Okay. Um, so we're talking about the transport layer, and last time we talked a bit about. Um, last time we basically reviewed the TCG and we discussed why it's interesting to have modifications to TCP uh, in mobile communications. <coughs> the reason for that is generally uh, as a result of congestion control. So in uh, wired networks, uh, TCP assumes that the only time a packet will be lost is as a result of congestion. So in other words, uh, somewhere a buffer is overflowed, uh, and packets have fallen out of that buffer, which generally indicates that congestion is occurring. And that, uh, what happens when uh, congestion can, uh, occurs is what's called slow start. So uh, TCP will immediately back off its window size to one, and will start again from there. Uh, so our argument was that if um, if uh, if packets are being dropped for reasons other than congestion, uh, this will result in a loss of bandwidth. So for example, in wireless links, if you have a temporary, if you temporarily enter a deep fade and a packet or two is lost, um, TCP will interpret that as congestion and will back off your data rate, whereas it doesn't necessarily have to. If you were able to uh, quickly retransmit those two packets and continue, uh, there, there's actually no reason to back off on the data rate. So, yes? Is there a proof that you look up to say that that the rest of the average result for relation between the, um, the throughput, the, the transfer rate, and the amount of packets lost. The HTCP. Well, that, that whole thing about uh, once it goes to, once it passes the uh, threshold of that, the first packet, uh, the first packet is, is going to be lost, it drops all the way back down to it. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, there are results, there are theoretical results. Uh, related to that, um, I don't. Uh, it's not in my area of specialty, so I can't really describe what they are. But there do exist theoretical results that show that uh, what TCP is doing is actually a form of optimization. So it's actually optimizing its data rate. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, uh, presumably, an, uh, an omnipotent being could uh, could do better, but uh, in, in a decentralized in a decentralized setting. If you're really interested, send me an email and I'll see if I can pick up some of the papers. But uh, yeah, it, 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 it is optimal in some sense. TCP does work really well. Um, so we started out talking about indirect TCP. So basically, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about um, three ways in which you can do TCP on wireless links, and each has its own advantages and disadvantages and specific problems that it's trying to solve. So firstly, let's talk about indirect TCP. So we started, uh, last class we started out talking about this a little bit. Um, this is basically the simplest thing you can do, simplest modification. Basically what it does, as I mentioned last time, uh, basically what it does is it splits the connection in two. And what it does is the, um, the wired part of the connection runs TCP, and the wireless something else. So in other words, TCP is restricted to the wired part of the network, which is exactly where it belongs and where all of the assumptions are valid. So in other words, if we have, um, uh, in other words, we have a, an access point. For example, this could be what we uh, mentioned before as the foreign agent. So the foreign agent uh, acts as the endpoint. For TCP, 
And after packets arrive at the foreign agent, uh, they're acknowledged as a TCP, but, but then subsequently they're forwarded on to the, uh, to the mobile node using some other method. So here's the figure. Figure one in your notes. So as usual, we have our corresponding node out here. communicating through the internet with some access point which is connected to a wireless network. And within that wireless network is your mobile node. So what happens is TCP runs from here to here. Those are all wired links. So um, everything is fine as far as TCP is concerned. Any packet drops between the corresponding node and the access point will most likely be as a result of congestion. And then on this last hop, something else is done. In fact, since this is generally a single hop, um, you can uh, you don't have to do anything terribly uh, complicated. Um, Basically, uh, uh, every packet that's sent, uh, probably all you need to do is just acknowledge it. Okay. So how this works. So packets arriving at the access point are immediately acknowledged. With and that's the TCP app. So in other words, as a packet travels from the corresponding node over here, uh, the access point is the endpoint of TCP, so um, the access point returns the acknowledgement uh, to the corresponding node. Uh, what the access point will also do is it will keep these packets in its buffer and relay them. TCP is completely isolated from what's going on in the wireless link. Uh, in fact, this is, in some sense, the ideal uh, uh, the ideal way to do things. Uh, so, uh, on the TCP link, there's uh, all of the stand, all of the uh, design assumptions are valid because everything's wired. If something else goes on on this link, these two sides are completely isolated from each other. Uh, so. Um, this is a perfect sort of layer to put on top of TCP. So on the wireless link, all that needs to happen <coughs> so the mobile will acknowledge packets as they arrive. Across the wireless link, generally this will be single hops. In other words, there'll be an antenna at the access point that will go straight to the mobile node, uh, unless you're doing some some kind of clustering. But even if you're doing some kind of clustering, uh, the local network will be quite small, so there's very little chance that congestion will happen over this link. Um, so what will happen is, if any of those packets are not acknowledged, probably they were dropped as a result of fading or noise. 